Hi, I'm Russ Shipton from Midi, and today we're at Puddle Dock Fishery in Essex. It's a fishery I've been coming to recently, and I like it here in the winter. And I'm going to give you some tips today on how I go about finding down my gear for from the summer through to change, and now we're coming towards the winter. Hopefully, we can keep them fish coming. Right, tip one. Accuracy, big, big thing, especially in the winter and the cooler months. Plumbing up, and accuracy with the plumbing up as well is a, a, a real big thing. And what I do is, once I've plumbed up, and I bring, bring my shot in back in, and I've got it exactly where I want it, I'll show you how I hook it up on the pole and mark it. And I'll show you what a lot of people do wrong. Now, if I hook this on the bottom of the pole, like. 99% of people do. This is under tension and the bottom of your float is here. So you want to release that tension all the way until it is still in a straight line, still hooked in the bottom here. And that there is the correct depth. So we would have been from here to here over depth with our marking. So if we had to change during the day, we'd have come back in and we'd have been two inches over. One of the biggest parts for accuracy in plumbing up is how you hold the pole and where you place it. Now I'll show you. I'm going to ship out. And on the end, I've got my short section, which has got the protector in here. I found my marker on the far bank, which is that flower just there. That's not going anywhere, that big flower. And I'm going to put this back into the V in my box, that protected V. And that's not going any further out or any further in than where it is now. Now when I lower it dead in line with that flower, you cannot get any more accurate than that when you're plumbing up. And that's how I'll fish it as well. I'll fish it using this method. You can do that exactly the same on the far bank, but I would use a bump bar, but only at five meters, I'll just do this. If you tend to put it with your elbow, yes, you can be quite accurate, but if you lean forward, that's another few inches. Lean back, that's another few inches. Doing it the way I'm saying here, using this protector V in the front of your box, which most boxes have got, you cannot possibly be in the wrong place if you're aiming at the same part on the far bank every time. Right, my next tip is my floats I use in the winter. I slim down the bodies and I slim down on the tip. Just basically, so you can dot it right down to next to nothing. And the finest of touches shows you a bite, gives you a better registration. Now for these, I use the MIDI MW range and this is the F1 wire. On a day like today, there's no wind, it's three foot deep, I've got the four number tens. A vital part to this, when you shot it and dot it right down, is to have trimming shots. During the day, quite often, your float will start to sink under. You've dotted it down, but it will start to sink under. We used to put grease on, and some people still do. But if it starts to sink, there's a few things it could be that's doing it. First of all, I would come in and recheck on me here where I've got the uh, depth and recheck that it's the same depth as what it was. So my float hasn't moved. Then, if that's still the same, then I would re-plumb. Plumb up in the same spot because the fish might have dug out some of the silt, and so it's going down with the depth. And that's why your floats, your, your uh, bait's not on the bottom, pulling your float under. If they're both the same and they're correct, then it's something to do with your float, or possibly your line, because your line takes on water. So that's where these trimming shots come in. You can just nip off a number 12 and that will just bring it back. And so there's just a tiny bit of your bristle showing to give you that real delicate presentation once again. If you have to do another one, there's two. I've got three on there, so you've got three chances. Keep that presentation as best as you can using these and that will get you more bites during the day in this colder weather.
Tip number three, during the colder months, you can still use the method feeder and it still catches you a lot of fish. But what I tend to do is I go down to the smallest size midi gripper feeder and I don't fill it all up with bait. I just fill with one section here, the small section. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's, you can do it. Just fill that one section. And then if you need to, get your knot picker or something small and take out the little excess that comes through. Very little bait goes in then. Then you pop your bait, the actual hook bait into it with the hook showing upwards. And there you are. Still use the method through the winter. I don't I need to double skin this because that pellet, the hook bait, is pushed into the micros. It's only going to the far bank in very shallow water. So that will still sit in there when it hits the bottom. So small amounts of bait, that pushed in into these soaked micros and that will stay on until the fish come and eat it. Tip number four is uh, about using bomb and pellet through the winter. I use these hook lengths. These are pre-tied size 14 to an eight pound hook, 12 inch long midi hook lengths. And the band is the perfect size for what I do with the eight mil pellet, which I shall show you. Comes in a 12 inch, but you can cut that down, tie another loop if you want to make it shorter, make a six inch. Put the eight mil pellet into the band in a standard way, either with a bander or just with your fingernail. And there you are, hangs nicely. And obviously that'll be sitting on the bottom for bomber pellet. But what I then do with this is I have a bait tub with a little bit of water in the bottom of it, just a little bit. And I just sit that in the water, leave the line over. And after a little while, That's what it looks like. It swells up. You can't swell it up and then put the band on because it'll just squash it. Now I'm gonna compare that with an eight mil pellet straight out the packet to show you the difference. There's three eight mils. There's the one I've soaked. And for me, that looks like that pellet's been in the water a long time. So those wary fish as they're coming along see brand new pellets, and then they see a bigger fluffy pellet, and in theory, they take your one first. I've done very well using this method. For my final tip, and possibly the most important one of these tips, is mental attitude. I have seen lots and lots of guys at the draw defeated and beaten before they even get to their peg. They draw what they think is a bad peg and that's it. They're never going to win from there. Well that's not correct. You can win from most pegs on certain days. So try to keep a positive attitude. Try to get to your peg, have a look round, see, pick something positive out of your peg. Have a look round. There'd be something there that you can work on and work with. Maybe the margins are deep. Maybe there's a mud hole like in this peg. Something that's gonna raise your enthusiasm to, to fish because you won't perform properly unless your attitude's correct. Realistically, the decisions you make in your match and the times you make them is going to affect where you come in that match. And if you're not in the right frame of mind to make the correct decisions, then your match isn't gonna go that well. So try to stay positive, get to your peg. That peg will have done well at some point, even if not recently, and fish swim. So they can always come from the other pegs around to where you are. Well, I hope these tips are useful for you and you can help yourselves catch more fish in the winter and look out for some more videos from MIDI coming out soon.